Good afternoon. I'm Ian Wardropper, director of the Frick Collection. Delighted to welcome you all here for the symposium, um, Collecting the Uncollectible, Earth and Site-Specific Sculpture. In 1972, I read an article by Calvin Trillin in The New Yorker titled, Maybe a Quantum Leap. This was about what he called earthworks and focused on the artists Michael Heiser, Walter DeMaria, Robert Smithson, and Christo. It inspired me to write a college senior thesis about earth art. This involved trips to Soho galleries to view documents and videos, as well as reading a lot of Robert Smithson and others in art form. I have no idea what happened to this college paper, and I veered off to study earlier periods of art, hence my presence here. Yet this academic exercise led me to want to experience the real thing. This is not so easy, which is of course the point. It took me decades before I finally saw a spiral jetty, by which time it had submerged and reemerged so that I could splash along it, and it was a magical moment. What attracted me as a college student was the romantic notion of these huge structures far away in and of the landscape, and the fact that they could not be tamed and brought into galleries and museums. Of course, they can in various ways be brought into museums, documented through photographs or in Smithson's smaller pieces, um, in sympathetic places like Dia Beacon uh, or LACMA incorporating Heiser's Boulder. Last week I was in Varese in Italy and went back to see the Panza collection where I had not been since 1982 and saw again Richard Tuttle's earliest sky piece, um, a site-specific work rather than earth art. If I'm sounding nostalgic, it's in looking back 50 years and thinking about the early promise of these works of art and what, how we view them today, which is really what this symp symposium is about. For 10 years, uh, the Center for the History of Collecting has studied collecting in all its aspects, uh, and this is the 24th symposium um, that the Center has mounted, uh, and I'm glad that it has chosen this topic. I want to thank Samantha Deutsch, Assistant Director of the Center. Um, this was her idea, uh, and she's worked tirelessly to make it happen, along with other staff members. Like, um, I won't mention them all, but uh, it's a, a, a strong um, um, but small um, cadre of people who, who put on the wonderful programs uh, of the center that was started by Inga Ries. We're grateful to the Dia Found Art Foundation, which has been very helpful in putting this together. Um, we thank all the participants for being here today and the audience for joining us. Um, and finally, I want to thank uh, the funders of today's symposium, uh, the Robert H. Smith family, uh, Northern Trust, uh, and the Billy Rose Foundation. And now, I think, Samantha. Thank you, Ian. Um, I just want to welcome you all, the warm welcome. And at this time, I'm told I need to ask you to turn off your cell phones, please. I want to begin by thanking our colleagues at the DIA Art Foundation. Without them and their knowledge of the field, we wouldn't um, have been able to put together such a robust program for you today. Um, additionally, I'd like to thank my wonderful colleagues here at the Frick Collection. It took a village. Many people helped me here and supported me. Um, but especially Louisa Woodruby, Ellen Prokop, and Margaret Laster, um, who has joined us as a special consultant at the Center. This topic is a new one for the Center for the History of Collecting, the seeds of which were planted at last year's symposium on collecting impressionism. We had many conversations with speakers and it kept coming up and coming up. So not surprisingly, there is an overlap between impressionism and our topic. Artists in both milieu broke new ground, quite literally in the case at hand today. Artists in, and, and their collectors were pioneers. Additionally, the artworks both deal with light, space, horizon, and arguably the passage of time. That is where the similarities end, though. Earth and site-specific sculpture exist on a grander scale, and the uncontrolled environments offer atmospheric pressure, wind, environmental optics, clouds, sun, rain, and so on. These far-reaching factors have an effect on one's perception of the works of art. They are ever-changing and rarely captured precisely in the same way. 
For many reasons, which we will explore here today, collecting them poses challenges. This topic is near to my heart, and I am an avid enthusiast, a tourist, I might say. Wherever my travels take me, I research and locate related works of art and make it my mission to visit them, sometimes twice. On one such trip, an art librarian's conference in Texas, I started out in Houston, proceeded to Marfa, and concluded in Fort Worth. And these are some of my photographs, but you know, the spiral jetty and the sun tunnel are just this past March. These trips find me, like many others that make the trek, driving hundreds of miles and visiting sites in different weather conditions. After such efforts, one might feel a sense of accomplishment, gathering authentic experiences, dare I say, collecting them as collectors collect canvases. This afternoon, we will begin our voyage with a keynote by Suzanne Becker, then a lecture by Diaz curator Alexis Lowry, who will look at the New York collector Robert Skull and his support of artist Michael Heiser. We are then honored to have a distinguished panel moderated by Diaz curator Kelly Kivland, uh, which will include artist Michelle Stewart, curator and art historian James Meyer, and conservator Rosa Lowinger. At this time, I would like to inform you that due to unforeseen circumstances, Virginia Dwan will be unable to join the panel. That said, we are appreciative of her support for the symposium her epic achievements and development of the field, and we plan to interview her at a later date, adding to our discourse and preserving her voice for future scholars. For now, her story is safe in the hands of James Meyer, who did an exhibition on her, her collecting, and her dealer, so that will be fun. Um, as our last treat for you, we are privileged to have the director of DIA Art Foundation, Jessica Morgan, um, in conversation with two distinguished collectors, Jarl Mohn and Leonard Riccio. Since we have a full program, I'm going to dispense with reciting lengthy biographies of our celebrated participants, and we have their biographies printed both at the registration desk and just outside the door, so you can read them about all their accomplishments on your own. Further, I am happy to announce that the symposium will not end after today. It will continue on our website, as we will be recording multiple perspectives from artists and other collectors. We have already completed an interview with artist Misha Kubal and Jonathan Brown on his mother's collection, her, his mother's Jean Brown.